Open that up about a quarter of a turn. The lever is on start. Let's see if she'll go. Come on. Come on. I thought it would. Open up that. And put it down on the run. Let her go. About one or two turns on the end. That's about all you need. If you really want it to call it, then you can set that back up there on The timing's a little bit sweet, let's say. I'll let her run. Now let's get back to work now. Back to the project at hand. The setup here is this riser blocks that I got two stacked. You just uh, I can actually work on something about uh, 16 inches tall in this in this machine right here. But what I've done is I cut three of these stand ups to fit inside the gear that'll fit in those notches in that gear. And what you do is put the thing line those line those notches up like so the standoffs comes through the gear and are resting onto the housing the center of this shaft should be at the center of your ram and uh, this this one I'm just using a the lever mechanism and never underestimate the power of a lever I mean you can move a railroad car with a lever and you put that right there raise that up to where it's in a straight line and you've got plenty of clearance on the hole in this now all I'm going to do is to put leverage on the lever and we'll observe this gear being pushed away okay now we've got one cam gear removed and To break it down, we've got the housing set, one piece, and the gear, in this instance, the shaft looks pretty decent. Now, if you put the micrometer on it, it's going to have some wear right there. But the problem is, is this gear was in the bottom of that housing and moisture collected down there and has rusted it beyond use no use let's get another okay class is in session this is the 1918 engine the uh, uh, understrike and you can see the the cam this being the later model, two lobes, this one has the single lobe, and if you do the math on it, right in this area right here, this one has a indent in it. So it does all of the, all of the movements in one plane of rotation, let's say. So we're going, it's stuck, it won't turn. It's stuck in the house, we've got to get her out of there. We would take it out anyway, even if it was not stuck. 
but it has to get out of there one way or the other. We are going to build this engine, so let's uh, let's proceed with caution in all endeavors. When you've got a piece of cast iron you're dealing with, let caution be the uh, code word. Caution, because cast iron it don't like heat. And it sure don't like being beat on with a hammer. So let's see, can we get that out of there? Oh, I seen it come loose. As a as a rule, uh, a, a small, medium-sized hammer and a gib key puller will win. We got it out of there. Right there it is. Let's we'll push that out of there. We surely want to save this one. Let's move over to the apparatus and push her out. Line her up straight and true. Pressure to the center of the shaft. And that one, with all of my weight on the end of the shaft, did not move. I'm going to put the porta power in here now. We'll push her out. Right in behind that flywheel there. That whole side cover housing right down in there. Now that's what we're working with. Now that part right down in yonder. Except it's one like that one right over there, igniter style. So let's not tarry. Let's get on with the. Let's get on. Let's get on with the project. We got plenty to do. I mean, we got some stuff to do. It's uh, uh, that's enough of that. Let's get on with the project. And as you can see yonder, uh, we got the porta power up in there. And uh, we're going to best get that pushed out of there now. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the port pair and you can see I have already pushed the shaft out beyond this gear. Just got about a half inch to go. And it's really tight. Uh, that was it. We got her out of there. So let's let the port pair go. Set that aside, the gear, the spacer, and we got her out of there. Let's get on to this another one now. Press that I'm using, built this thing a few years ago. It, uh, it has served me well. You would be uh, well advised to build yourself one. You can just kind of look at it and tell what I have done here. But it works on a, this, the way I am using it normally to use it in a broaching situation. I just use this lever, this arm, and when I built the thing, I put a series of holes in that upright uh, shaft and then in the cross pieces some holes. And you can adjust it there to increase the poundage or less. Actually, the less poundage, the longer stroke you have. You can uh, shorten the stroke there in the travel, and it really increases the poundage of uh, pushing pressure you have. But as you can see, I've got a, another side cover set up in the apparatus. And when I put pressure, when I pull down on that lever over there, then that works as a fulcrum right there and puts pressure on that shaft coming down through yonder. So we're going to push that one out. 